Good morning, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul, and look at these two beautiful fruits from Wallace Ranch. This is American Beauty. It's weighing in at one and sixty-seven hundredths of a pound, quite a large one. And Axe here is weighing in at just over a pound, so really nice sized fruit, as you can see. Now this one is a little bit green on the skin, but that's because it was in a shady spot in their in their farm, and you can see here that it's cracked. And that's how we knew that this one was ripe and it's quite large. So sometimes the skin may be a bit green on these varieties, especially Axe, as you can see, because it's ripe when it is a green skin and it's just starting to turn color from the, as, it, as the outer skin is thinning. So both of these fruit are ripe. So let's go ahead and compare them. Let's cut open Axe first. So you can see what a beautiful color it is. And you probably could have even left it on a little bit longer. It's a nice thick kind of skin here and beautiful colored flesh inside. And it has a very interesting story, the story of Axe. So let's give it a taste. It's really unique. Kind of like a hint of banana. And I really like it. I think it's a good fruit. It does have an interesting finish. I'm not quite sure how to describe the finish, but it's very, very sweet. So that's Axe, which is an Edgar Valdivia seedling, a Sunta unknown pollen source. That's what X stands for. Let's cut open this large American Beauty, which is the Walls Ranch American Beauty. And look at that beautiful fruit. You can see it's definitely, the th skin is getting a little thin here, so it's definitely really ripe. And let's give this monster a taste. What a big fruit. Mmm. Delicious. Now going head to head, you can see some differences here. The one on the left is a bit more magenta. And this one has a bit more of maybe some pink tint. And this one is traditionally green skin when it's ripe. So let's see and compare the two. Seeds are bigger in this one, as you can see. Wow. I'd have to say head to head, American Beauty gets it by a clear point. I'd probably give this an eight, this a nine. They're both really delicious, both unique in their own way. This one could be possibly on the vine a bit longer. It was really delicious. I think what it is is that this one has a, is probably sweeter. Here's the bricks on it. I have, well, I'll test it later. But here's the bricks on it. I'm gonna guess it's in the around 19. And so it's sweet, but then you get a little bit of a earthy finish. And it does taste more like a, I can't, I call it a banana. It's definitely sweeter. But something about the finish is not as good as this one. Or there's something about this like acidity and sugar in American Beauty. I think this could be a G2 style of American Beauty in my personal opinion. Based off of some things I've learned over the years. It's definitely their Guatemalans. But this is definitely a winner. By a point. For sure, I give this a 9. I really enjoy this fruit. It's one of my favorite. Look at the flesh to seed ratio. I mean, look at the amount of flesh right here. Hardly any seeds at all. And that is what makes a dragon fruit the best, in my opinion. That's something I really look for in a fruit. But there's no hate on Axe. Axe is really delicious as well. And you know why Axe probably would be a tie? Is because it should probably earn a point for its flower. It has one of the most beautiful flowers of any dragon fruit varieties, in my opinion. It's red, reddish purple. 
So my, my axe at my house should bloom next season. So I look forward to sharing you and show you that. So give us a like and a subscribe. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. And hopefully you could enjoy some of these fruit soon. Good morning, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul. And today I'm gonna to end Arizona Purple's misery. You can see it produced a flower and fruit from cutting. It's very loose. And it could probably sit on there a few more days and get sweeter, but I think I'm gonna let this thing recover. So I'm gonna prune it off right here, put this in the fridge and give it a taste and weigh it. And let's see what type of brick score a cutting can produce. I don't expect much, but we'll see. Okay, so here's the first fruit of the season, Arizona purple. As you can see, it came from a two foot cutting, 25 inches. It weighs 99 grams or two tenths of a pound. And let's check out its brick score right now. So it's still a beautiful color. And again, this is, they say the same thing as Sugar Dragon. It does appear to be almost identical to Sugar Dragon in my opinion. And let's see what this little guy can bricks. I'm excited to see the score. This is my first fruit of the season and not what I expected for sure. I did not expect to have this as my first fruit. Okay. There we go. And go ahead in the comments write down your prediction about what you think this fruit will brick set. What is the value gonna be? Now to get the highest score, you wanna get right in the center of the fruit. That's where it's always the sweetest. And you don't wanna cross contaminate your pipette. So you wanna make sure you use two separate ones. One for the water and one for the juice. I need a little more, it's pretty juicy. Not bad for a little cutting. Okay, yeah, those bubbles. I do not really want those bubbles. Okay, now it's a little bit light out, so I'll cover this. Let's see. Wow, 17 and 3 tenths. That's impressive. Okay, Arizona purple. Mmm, wow. <laughs> Way sweeter than I imagined it would taste. Now, this is probably the one variety. Arizona purple, sugar dragon, voodoo child will probably produce a sweet fruit from a cutting. But this is delicious. And it tastes just like the sugar dragons I've eaten before. So who would have thought that, man, that's good. Who would have thought that a 25 inch cutting could produce such a sweet fruit? Again, over 17. Now be aware that sugar dragons do bricks into the mid twenties. Uh, my friend's plant is bricks at 28. So there you go. Give us a like and a subscribe. What a way to start the season. It's pretty random, but it's delicious. That's for sure. Good morning, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul, and you can see here that this Orahona has passed the wiggle test and it was ready to eat. So I put it in the fridge for 24 hours, and here it is now. And you can see it's just under half a pound, or 222 grams. Now I do like to call this one Linda's Orahona because it looks, in my humble opinion, slightly different than the UCNR uh, research stations Orahona, just slightly if you look at the spines. And I've even collected a few different ones that look similar to the Orahona style as well. And you can see that there are some differences. Linda's is on the right, and it even has that beautiful little flower bud. So it has gold, more golden spines in my opinion. Now you can see that the fruit is oblong in shape. And according to the research, it won't bricks higher than about a 16. So let's see how this one does. It's been on the vine for over 50 days. I didn't record it. Just did the wiggle test. And there you go. 
beautiful red fleshed fruit on the smaller size but it looks delicious nice and definitely nice and moist looking so let's pull out that middle and see what the brick score is how much sugar content is in this dragon fruit Mmm, definitely a berry vibe to it. Let's see how it scores. It's distilled water. Set it to zero. And then now, use a different pipette, pipette I should say. And you wanna just get the liquid. Okay, there we go. I have enough juice on there finally. Let's see how it reads. So 14.5. So definitely on the lower size side of fruit, but this is its first fruit. And Brix isn't everything. So this plant will probably increase in time, but again, it won't really get above a 16 from what I've read or heard. But definitely a very enjoyable fruit. My, in my opinion, I prefer this over any white I've eaten so far. It's got a nice berry vibe, kind of like a tart raspberry. And the texture is really soft. It's not like El Grullo where it's thicker or denser, like almost like a beet. This one's just like a beautiful kind of mixed berry flavor in my humble opinion. It's a bit more tart on the outer edges, but that inside is the sweetest part. And I guarantee when this plant matures a bit more, it will put a higher brick score. I bet we can maybe get a 16 or 17. Oh, nice sized fruit. Should talk about the exterior. It's very beautiful, long bracts. Pretty color red on the outside and on the end. So there you go, Linda's Orahona a delightful red flesh variety native to Nicaragua. And the biggest bummer about this plant is that it's quite spiny, but it does tolerate full sun really well. Good evening, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul, and look at this. We have red Jaina. Now I cross-pollinated the flower 43 days ago, and now we have this beautiful fruit. I'm excited to try it out. I'm gonna guess it's about a pound, and I think it's gonna be delicious. Now it did pass the wiggle test, as you could see, so it's definitely ripe. So let me put this in the refrigerator and let's go give this a taste. So Red Jane has 386 grams or 85 hundredths of a pound, which is a great size. Now this is a Hylocereus polyrhizus hybrid. You can see the difference in the fruit compared to this, which is a Hylocereus costarricensis hybrid. A little larger, this fruit's about a one and a third pounds. So I'm really excited to taste Red Jaina. I'm really excited to see how it scores on the Brix refractometer. So let's just do it. Let's give it a cut. And let's see what it's made of. Really beautiful red flesh. You can see the skin's a little thin here, which would be bad for commercial growing because it would damage easily, see? So definitely, a good fruit for a backyard grower due to that thin skin and it is a bit more purple than it is on film remember you can kind of see the best color of the flesh off of the blade of the knife so that's what color the flesh is so magenta red we're gonna go right in the middle for it mmm definitely a different flavor Wow Really good. Need to think about what those flavors, how I can describe them. But it's definitely unique. So let's go ahead and give it a reading on this Brix refractometer. And you can see here on the website from Matt's Landscaping that it's a hybrid, it's self sterile, and the plant is cold sensitive. But it is a pr productive uh, bloomer, which is a good thing. All right, let's get to work on this. Where is my pipette? All right, so zero it out. Get 
get a bit more juice. So at 18. So definitely a very respectable score. Red Jaina. That's the higher end of the red varieties and brick score. And remember, brick score isn't everything. Just because it doesn't hit 20 doesn't mean it's not sweet. So definitely a very unique berry vibe, but not raspberry. Definitely different than Orahona. It's almost like I can't put my finger on it. It's really interesting though, really delicious. Kind of like a raspberry and strawberry mix. The seeds are really enjoyable. It's very juicy as you can see. A lot of liquid, which is what I really like. I don't like dry dragon fruit. And again, this is another red flesh variety that's just superb. So I really enjoy growing red flesh varieties. And this one, I think I like it more than Orahona, I'd have to say. Orahona's got a bit more tartness to it, and this one is a bit sweeter. Mmm. Just a delicious fruit. Wow. Red Jaina. And a beautiful flower, too. So there you go. 18 on the Bricks Refractometer. Really delicious, soft, delicate fruit. Maybe a bit of lychee and strawberries and raspberries. Kind of how I would describe the flavor profile of Red Jaina. Soft, juicy, balanced, delicious. Wow, I'm gonna give that like an eight out of 10. Maybe an eight and a half out of 10. Wow, I really don't wanna share this with anyone. I think I'm gonna eat the rest. Greetings, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul, and today I'm gonna to taste review Edgar's Baby. You can see it's a little over half a pound here, or 258 grams. Now, what makes this variety unique is that you harvest it, and the skin has a greenish tint. Now, I've eaten it at different stages, day 45 to days 55, and I prefer it right around now, day 46, as you can see. Now, it is a different shape than, say, Maki Supa. You can see Maki Supa is more rounded, like in American Beauty. Edgar's baby is more elongated. That's kind of how I describe it. Reminds me of a similar shape of the K, but definitely a different variety, as you can see. In fact, this variety was created by Edgar Valdivia, and it's an Asunta seedling, not a seedling from the variety called Edgar. You can see the flower here is white. It's a really beautiful flower that smells great. And you can see I've tasted it. This is my favorite kind of when it's the green skin still around day 46. And it bricks to 17.7. Now you could keep it longer on the branch, but I didn't taste much of difference again. And I prefer it around day 46 to day 50. So let's get started. Let's taste this beautiful fruit. First, I want to show you what makes it so unique. It's that it's pink flesh, see? I'd, I'd call it pink. You could call it fuchsia. It's a, it's a unique shade. It's definitely a different shade of color compared to, say, an American Beauty. It's very beautiful. So, this tastes a bit like different Asuntas to me. A little bit of Axe is kind of what I rem it reminds me of, but it's definitely different. It comes off as really sweet right away. And then the seeds are a little earthy, which is probably the only drawback I can think of, but I enjoy it. I think it's a great fruit. So let's see how sweet it is. Now I haven't had it test above 18 yet, so we'll see how it does today. Definitely really juicy, as you can see. And I really enjoy this fruit. Although I believe I need a bigger one of these. Or I should say a smaller pipette. There we go. What do you think it's gonna be? I'm not sure about this one. It tastes sweet. 
I'm going to guess between 17 and 18. Probably should use a strainer one of these days. This method still works. And it's 15 and 7 tenths. But you did see I've tasted it higher. But even at 15 and 7 tenths, it tastes really sweet to me. It's really enjoyable. Mmm. I also like to refrigerate them, which I learned does slightly change the profile or the flavor. But that's how I like to eat it. Mm. I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10, which is a respectable score. I see these going for quite a bit of money, the cuttings. I don't think they're worth it. You can also get these. They've been tissue cultured, and you can find Edgar's Baby at big box stores like Walmart. I've seen them at uh, Home Depot before, different uh, nurseries. So Edgar's Baby is not a rare variety. It's definitely out there. This, this variety was tissue cultured, this specific plant from, and I bought it, it came from Monterey Bay Nursery. I believe not Monterey Nursery, one of those, I can't remember what it said. <laughs> but either way, popular nursery, and this is a delicious fruit. So there you go, Edgar's Baby. Greenish skin, and a beautiful, delightful, lovely texture. Nice sweet fruit, and again, it's slightly earthy in my opinion. The seeds that's why it gets a seven out of ten. But if it's a dragon fruit that I like, can finish the whole way, it's definitely a seven and above. So, I would recommend Edgar's Baby. Good morning, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul, and look at this beautiful cosmic Charlie fruit 95 hundredths of a pound, 434 grams. I got this fruit, or plant I should say, at Spicy Exotics about two seasons ago, and it's already produced several fruit. Now this one was getting some shade. You could see it was getting direct sun here where it's most, it's turned salmon colored versus this more greenish color because it was getting some shade from branches. But it was extremely loose and I was worried it was gonna crack. So I decided to put this in the fridge last night so we could give it a proper taste test today. Now, as you can see in Paul Thompson's book, 2S, which is Cosmic Charlie, he described having a deep red colored flesh. Now, I, I call it more vibrant. You'll see it's kind of like marbled. It's really beautiful. And you can also see in Pine Island's uh, website that they said that it was, it's very similar looking, but this variety is not self-fertile in my experience or my climate in Southern California, Zone 9B. So let's describe what this thing looks like and let's taste this beautiful fruit again here's that kind of marbled description that I would call it so I wonder why Paul Thompson called it a deep red very interesting I wonder if this is a different one it's something I've never been sure of but everybody with Cosmic Charlie has a fruit that looks like this so let's give it a proper taste but before we do, I want you to notice this. My favorite thing about it is that there's a beautiful flesh to seed ratio. And that's my kind of dragon fruit. You almost don't detect the seeds. And that's one of the best aspects about this fruit, in my opinion, or some of Paul, all of Paul Thompson's hybrids. Mm. Like a sweet grape, melon, and kiwi. Really delicious. Right, let's give this a proper Brix refractometer score here.
19 and 2 tenths as you can see very respectable score very sweet you know it's almost 20 percent is sugar mm, that was really sweet i'm gonna go ahead and give it another quick retest Now that we're deeper in there. So just a delicious fruit. I mean, how do I describe the sweet, smooth, juicy? I mean, I, I would eat this any day over that Valdivia Roja I tasted yesterday. Mm. There's just no comparison. Honestly, I think that Paul Thompson's hybrids in a series are just some of the most underrated fruit people go crazy to buy these exotic varieties where this this is one of the best fruit of the season now, I would say dark star tasted a little bit better in my opinion but this thing is just delicious I give it an eight nine out of ten something like that eight and a half I mean I could just eat this every day thin skin you can see it's really ripe so that's one drawback for commercial potential P potential is that if it's this thin skin the fruit can get damaged when shipped look at that beautiful color fret flesh to me it just kind of has a marbled color you can see some whiteness in it some fuchsia it's stunning So there you go, Cosmic Charlie. Beautiful variety by the late, great Paul Thompson. Greetings, fellow dragon fruit lovers. This is Paul, and look at this. This is Soul Kitchen White. I should mention it's split. So let's compare three fruit and see which one's the best. So that one's Soul Kitchen White. Up next is Maki Supa, which is a hybrid of Polyrhizus and Adatus. And this one had split as well, as you can see, right there. It's a beautiful colored flute, a little bit smaller, similar shape. And then here is K or Kaslau flute. Let's compare these. So again, you can see all the differences and I'm most excited I've never had Maki Supa. I have two fruit on the plant that is two years old. So if we had to grow one of these, let's see which one will taste the best in my opinion. So up first is K, which is from Elk Creek Dragon Fruit, Kaslau Fruit, That's another name for it. Mmm. Bit of tartness, balanced, but a delicious fruit. Tastes like raspberries to me. Seeds are a little earthy, but balanced. I picked it a little early too. You can see it was just turning turn color and see how thick the skin is. So it's not at its peak flavor. I kind of like to eat it when it's tart like that. Something I enjoy. Compared to a white flesh variety. It's more mild, kind of tangy. And of the two, this one's sweeter, the white flesh. Not by much. This is more ripe. However, I do prefer the texture of K. I think it has a better texture. And now, most exciting. I'm most excited to try Maki Supa. Let's see how it tastes. Wow. That's a clear winner. Of the three, Maki Supa is my favorite. It's really sweet. It's got some complexity in there. Firm texture. 
lot of seeds in there. The flesh to seed ratio is kind of high. But of the three, that's the one I'd want to eat first. This one would be better if it was more ripe. Needed about a week or so more on the plant, five days or so. So, Maki Supa, or the hybrid, is the clear winner here. I really think it's delicious fruit. I'll do a review on the other fruit very soon. Give it an official brick score. But you can just see the differences between these varieties. Just how unique they are. Which one do you think is the prettiest in your opinion? I'd love to hear from you. Let us know in the comments. Which one would you want to taste if you had the opportunity, uh, opportunity to taste any of these? Okay. Thanks for your time. Give us a like and a subscribe. Have a wonderful day. Good morning, fellow dragon fruit growers. Look at this dark star. It's just under one and a quarter pounds or 554 grams. So what a beautiful fruit. Look at this. Paul Thompson's 9S. Now you can see here, it was renamed by Pine Island Nursery. But before that, Paul Thompson recorded having a unique flavor and the flowers were unique with stigma lobes split ends and it was bifid so the flower is unique on this variety uh, compared to its seedling sisters he also labeled it as having commercial potential you can also see the flower here it's a photo i took and my source is from matt's landscaping now the website's been taken down but i recorded it before it was taken down i took some screenshots and there's some uh, mistakes on here it's not self-pollinating it does need to be cross-pollinated and it is correct, he, he is right. The fruits do get one and a quarter pounds, just like here. And they recorded saying that it has mild grape flavor and it's been su it's sweet. So let's see for ourselves. I'm really excited to cut this open. Look at that beauty. Now they call it Dark Star because it's a little bit darker, the flesh, than some of its sister seedlings beautiful skin's a little bit on the thin side but this thing's also really ripe it looks like so let's give it a shot it's a really nice textured fruit wow that's delicious really really good okay let's check out the brick score See how much the sugar content is. Wow. It is kind of like a mild grape flavor. Really sweet. Sweet grapes, in my opinion. This definitely tastes like one of the sweetest so far that I've tasted this year. Oh, wow. I'll just get a little bit more of the juices here. And you can see the amount of flesh here. The ratio of the flesh to the seeds is just amazing. What delicious texture. I don't detect any earthiness. We're at a 19 and 5 tenths. Very respectable score. I'm going to take one more reading before I dive into this fruit just to see if there's any differences. And again, you always want to take your reading from the same spot. You can see I'm doing it right here in the center. So 19 and 6 tenths. So just under 20. And it's delicious. What a beautiful fruit. You can see why Paul Thompson labeled this as having commercial potential. Do the fruit size. And 
and the overall flavor. I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. This is just delicious. One of these underrated plants. Everybody's buying these trendy kind of varieties with unique names. But a lot of them are, improv are unproven. And this is just delicious. It has a mild... Reminds me a bit of a lychee. Possibly a rambutan, if you've ever had that. Just a slight flavor, not the texture at all. <laughs> Easily one of the best fruits of the year. So there you go. Dark Star 9S. One of Paul Thompson one of Paul Thompson's hybrids. And I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Delicious fruit. All right, give us a like, subscribe. Thanks for your time. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Good morning, fellow dragon fruit lovers. This is Paul, and I'm with some of my favorite fruits here. This is Laverne Pink, one and a quarter pounds, versus Dark Star, which is one and a third pound, as you can see. So Laverne Pink was actually mislabeled as a Laverne Red, and I think it's a seedling. As you can see here, look at the stem. It's definitely interesting looking. And it's more spiny than some of the other Laverne pinks I've seen out there. And here's a picture of the flower that you can see as well. Now in time, this will get larger. The plant's young. So we'll see what it becomes. But here it is. This was my favorite fruit last season. And look at that color. It's beautiful. Wow. Versus Dark Star. It's going to be a little bit different color. It's still equally beautiful. Okay, I'm really excited. This is my only fruit off of Laverne Pink that I got last year or this year. So let's see how it tastes. Mmm. Wow. It's definitely. I think it's better than I remember it, I hate to say. It's really, really sweet. It's complex. It has a nice bit of acidity to it. It's a great, great fruit. All right. I'm going to predict it's up near the 20s at least. So let's see. So 19 and 1 tenth. It's been a weird season, so it probably could have been on the vine or the branch longer. And this thing did get in the 20s last year. 21 and 0.5. Mmm. Wow. I really like this fruit. This is definitely my favorite one to date. Unless... This beautiful dark star does better. Let's see. Mmm. That's really hard to pick. I think I'm gonna have to call it a draw. I mean, it's delicious too. Very different flavor, more like a grape. And the better texture. I would say that the texture of dark star is slightly better. I prefer it. Let's see what the bricks sugar content is. Twenty and one tenth. So this large dark star it took the bricks award. Hmm. What about flavor? Let me try one more. Because right now it's honestly a draw, but these are my two favorite dragon fruit for sure. Mmm, that's delicious. That's delicious too. I'm gonna have to say Thai. They're both unique. They're definitely different. I'd say the texture of this one takes the cake and it's slightly sweeter as you can see. 
but this one just has it kind of bounces you all around it it's very sweet the texture is really nice too the seed to flesh content is really great oh man I'm gonna give this a nine this a 9.1 it's that good last season's was a little bit better I think the weather we've had this hot and cold weather it's affected the fruit this year so there you go my two favorite fruit dark star and Paul's Laverne pink just a delicious looking and tasting fruit look at this and dark star is no slouch either look at this beautiful color all right, give us a like and a subscribe. Thanks for your time. Have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. Good evening, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul, and today I'm gonna to do a contest of Houghton versus El Grullo. So a Selenoceris Cetaceous versus Hyloceris Ocamponis. Now this one breaks to a 17. I already have it open, as you can see. It's a very dark, fleshed, beautiful fruit. And here's the brick score, you can see we had just done it and I took a little taste and it is delicious. I enjoy El Grullo personally. Now I have not ever tried this Houghton here. So you can see here that Houghton is a self-fertile variety and it's number 23 in Paul Thompson's unknown species list. And the plant's dark green, not horny, and it has a single spine, occasionally a double. Now according to Matt's landscape, this variety is named after Arthur D. Houghton, 1870 to 1938 is when he was around. And he was a medical doctor, a hypnotist, and a botanist in Los Angeles. He wrote the Cactus Book, published in 1931, and I actually just ordered it today. So I'm excited to read it. Now here's some photos of the fruit, the oldest photos I could find from Matt's landscape. And it is similar looking to Sugar Dragon and Voodoo Child, which makes sense because it is the parent of those varieties. Houghton is the mother, one of the parent plants, I should say, of some of our favorite hybrids and varieties that we enjoy like Sugar Dragon. So let's go ahead, let's cut it open and let's compare these two. And this one was a quarter pound, this Houghton, as you can see, just weighed in at a quarter pound versus the El Grullo, which weighed in at nine tenths of a pound or so. So just comparing them, you can see the size, also the color. This is what I consider a magenta. That's what I consider a red fleshed. So a nice dark red flesh versus a magenta, or some people call it fuchsia. So I'm really excited to taste my first Houghton, or some people say Houghton, but I believe it's Houghton. So let's see what it tastes like. I bet it's gonna be like Sugar Dragon. Hmm, Sugar Dragon has definitely improved. If you have to pick one, I'd go Sugar Dragon over this variety. I can tell you it's a little bit, it's not earthy, it's like green, you know? It is off of a cutting, to be fair, and it does taste sweet, so it's not a bad variety, but I just think that the hybrid, the cross of Houghton and Rixford improved. The seedlings are improvements over this parent plant. And Paul Thompson says this one is sensitive to frost, more sensitive. I want to try it again before it bricks the other one. It's juicy. It's hard to describe. It's just not quite as sweet or as, as delicious as Sugar Dragon. I've eaten quite a few Sugar Dragons in my time. One of my favorite varieties. Let's get some of these juices out. Let's see what this scores. So, El Grullo was a Brix of 17, and this one is probably about the same. Probably does get sweeter if, a, if it was off of a full-sized plant instead of just a cutting. The cutting was quite large. And 16 and 5 tenths. So, I bet it would be sweeter off of a full-sized plant. But considering that they have about the same amount of sweetness, I'm gonna say that Houghton 
is about this Houghton is about a seven out of ten. It's sweet and refreshing. It's been in the fridge overnight. It's just it's not as good as Sugar Dragon. That's all I can say. It is good though. So seven out of ten. This is Ogruyo. So Hylocerus ocamponis, much different. You can see it's the skin is nice and thin. It was on the plant for about 46 days, maybe a little bit longer, 46 to 48 days. I didn't keep track. I was out of town. Mm. And this, this fruit is less dense than the one I reviewed last year. Maybe because it's a bit more ripe. But I do not detect beets, like people say. Earthiness, yes. The seeds taste earthy to me. Maybe like a candied beet. I don't know. This is really a good fruit. A lot of people are saying, or some people I should say, are saying that Ocamponis is not good or El Grullo is not a very good fruit, but this one's really delicious. And it's definitely better than the one I tasted last year. So maybe a little bit longer on the plant improved, help improve the flavor. I really enjoy this. Out of the two, I can give this like almost a seven. Out of the two, this one tastes a little bit like maybe vegetable-y, I guess you could say, or earthiness. And this one almost tastes as good as Sugar Dragon. I guess is the best way to describe it. So going back to back, I'm gonna select Houghton as the winner. A bit more tropical flavored, like tropical fruit flavored, where this one tastes a bit more like earthy vegetables, not quite beets, but how do I describe this? Denser texture, mild flavor, mild berry flavor, mild berry and beets. Yeah, I guess it is kind of the best way to describe it, like a really sweet, not quite as dense beet. And I know that doesn't sound very appealing, but it's a good fruit. It's definitely a keeper in my collection. So there you go. Give us a like and a subscribe. Thank you so much for your time. Which one would you rather eat? El Grullo or Houghton? Good morning, fellow dragon fruit lovers. This is Paul, and today we're gonna do a taste test on Maki Supa. It's three quarters of a pound, 350 grams. You can see it's got a really beautiful colored skin, and I would describe it as kind of reddish pink. It's nice and round too. Hylocerus and Datus crossed with Hylocerus polyrhizus, and it's magenta fleshed fruit. Now you can see here the flower bud is really beautiful, kind of has a reddish tint, and the flower itself is gorgeous as well. Now they are really fragrant, however, they didn't fully open. Both of them didn't fully open, so I thought maybe it was a weather pattern, I'm not sure. And here's the oldest source that I could find online. I got mine from Spicy Exotics, but Matt's Landscape was selling it before and calling it a reliable producer and tolerant of the sun. Now, he also said it's self-fertile, but most people say it's self-sterile. So I cross-pollinated it to set fruit and let's see how it tastes. So you can see it right here, really beautiful color, nice and round. It looks really ripe. Now I tasted one yesterday and I really enjoyed it. I actually compared it to some other varieties and I prefer this one. Really delicious. Kind of a berry, kiwi, melon kind of vibe. Seeds are really crunchy, but not earthy. I really like this fruit. Let's give it a score. 
and check the me or I shouldn't say give it a score. Let's measure its sugar content. I guess it's about a 16. Maybe a 17. There's plenty of juice in this one. It is rather juicy, and the texture is really pleasant. I like this fruit, again. It's not acidic. I would probably take a American Beauty over this. Or G series, a Guatemalensis, 16 and 2 tenths. Very respectable. And I generally like to eat anything above maybe a 14 or a 15. Anything under 15 is kind of not very enjoyable, in my opinion. Mmm. I really like th this fruit. The color, the flavor. In terms of dragon fruit, I'd call this kind of mild. It's not bland, but it's just, it's more on the mild side. You know when you get different melons and sometimes a melon's very flavorful, other times it's a bit more on the bland side. It's like a really toned down red variety. So there you go, Maki Supa. I'm gonna give it a seven and a half out of 10. It's a good fruit but there are definitely better fruit than this out there. Good morning, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul, and check out this Valdivia Roja, 62 hundredths of a pound, or 281 grams. Now you can see here that the branches of Valdivia Roja are very, very unique. And unlike some may think, this is actually not named after Edgar Valdivia, but it's it was collected in, in Jalisco State in Mexico. And I believe it was after found at some ranch, a Rancho Valdivia, or something like that. But anyways, you can see that the bracts are kind of smaller, and the fruit is a very interesting reddish color. Now, it did kind of turn a little bit yellowish before it ripened, but several Ocamponis do that in my experience. Also, you can see, look at how stunning the flowers are. It's one of the prettiest flowers of all the dragon fruit, in my opinion. It has reddish bracts, and you can see also that it has beautiful, beautiful outer petals and there's like yellow stripes on a few of them. It's stunning. And I really find it interesting. In addition, you can see it's one of the 20 dragon fruit varieties that have been evaluated by UCCE or the Irvine uh, Research Station. And it was labeled to have a decent sized bricks. A decent brick score, I should say. So let's get to it. Let's check this thing out. This is Sugar Dragon and Voodoo Child, by the way, just for size comparison. And let's see. Very dark red flesh, thin skin, so it's probably not very commercially viable. Look at how thin that skin is. Squeezes easily. And that's a decent flesh to seed ratio. Now, I'm interested to see, this doesn't look like a typical Ocamponis fruit but I supposedly has a typical Ocamponis taste. So let me be the judge of that. It is dense, but not as dense as El Grullo. It's definitely a little earthy. It tastes much different than El Grullo. Definitely tastes different. Well, let's see how the brick score is. Definitely not my favorite, I'll tell you that. Um, it's not bad, but I think I'm growing it more for the flower. I can honestly tell you that. I'm gonna give it like a unofficial like five and a half. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm not gonna be looking forward to eating this entire thing to be honest with you. So take that into account before you spend a bunch of money on a Valdivia Roja cutting. That is the first fruit on the plant in its defense. But it's quite sweet. 
Can't use that again, sorry. Definitely not as juicy. You can see I'm gonna have a little bit of trouble extracting some juices for the bricks. But I'll get some out. If you use the pulp, it's not gonna be accurate. Should be enough for a reading. 16 and 6 tenths. Now, just to be sure, I want to give it one more. Okay, 17 and 2 tenths. So you can see sometimes if you get a different reading on the outer part of the fruit at the top here in the middle, it's going to be a little sweeter. It doesn't taste as sweet as a 17. I guess it does. It's not very juicy. Slightly, could be, I don't think it's overripe, but it's sort of, the texture is gelatinous slightly not necessarily a bad way this was refrigerated for one night and it's just not my favorite I mean it'd be good to have it mixed into some type of food possibly like a salsa but I'm gonna give this about a five and a half out of ten and right now I'm eating it just because it's sort of sweet and it's good for me but Ooh. There are many other dragon fruit varieties that you can enjoy besides this one. Texture is slightly dense like a beet. I'm not sure if it's the earthiness of the seeds is what the problem is. So let me get a bunch of seeds really quick. Let's see if it's that. Mm. Grainy texture. That's what I'm going to say. It's slightly gelatinous or grainy, if that makes sense. I'd be lying if I told you this is good and enjoyable. So I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10. That's my official score for Valdivia Roja. I guess I'll give some fruit away to people that enjoy this type of thing in the future. I have two more this season, so I'll see what my neighbors think of it. That's what I'll do. All right, give us a like and a subscribe. Thank you for your time. And grow this one for the flower and possibly to hybridize because it is kind of sun tolerant. But in terms of fruit flavor, texture, there are way better dragon fruit varieties than this. Greetings, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul, and today Trisha and El Grullo are going to go head to head. El Grullo is Hylocerus ocamponis, and look at that, it's one and a quarter pounds, where Trisha is a little smaller at 65 hundredths of a pound. Now, an interesting story, or I guess fact, I should say is that El Grullo is the parent plant of Trisha. El Grullo was brought up, it's Hylocerus ocamponis, and it was brought up by Romero Lobo from Jalisco State in Mexico. And you can see this is a Hylocerus ocamponis, and it's a dense flavored fruit, dense fleshed fruit, I should say, and they get rather large. They can be almost two pounds. So a nice red fleshed fruit, and it's really pretty. It's one of my favorite looking varieties. Not my favorite tasting though. And then this one is Trisha and Edgar Valdivia named it after one of his daughters and he took El Grullo and crossed El Grullo with a Hylocerus undatus, a white flesh variety. And this is the result. So let's cut it open and let's compare the colors and the flavors today. So you can see they are similar in color. So the white undatus DNA did not affect the color. Ocamponis 
DNA seems to be really, really strong in my experience of growing different varieties. So when you use this variety, it seems that this is kind of like the dominant DNA. Maybe it's just a light, tiny bit more magenta. I mean, they are a tiny bit different, but very slightly. You can see this Trish is really ripe. It's thin skin. The skin is all thin. So let's give this a taste. Mmm. It's pleasant. The texture is more grainy than some of my other favorite varieties, but it's not bad, but it's definitely not my favorite. So let's see the sweetness content. Let's bricks it. And that's not that high, in my opinion. I can already kind of tell that it's just a 15 or 16, but we'll see. I could be wrong. It is sweeter the more I each bite I have. So I'm to taste it, detecting more sugar. 15, three. 15 and 3 tenths, it's respectable. Anything above the 14s is, in my opinion, is a good fruit. It's quite nice. It's just the texture is not my favorite. It's a bit more grainy. You know the difference between like really fine sugar and larger granules of sugar? It's kind of like that. It was more granular. No earthiness though. It's a really good fruit. Compared to, let's try the bigger half. El Grullo. Much more earthy. El Grullo is a much more earthier flavored fruit. Wow, it's kind of cool doing this back to back. So you can just see how much it changes from one generation to the next. But hands down, I would, if you can grow both or only grow one, grow Trisha. Trisha is a better, better fruit in my opinion. Definitely better. Now let's see, I think this one's probably a little sweeter, but the texture is not as good as Trisha. And there's a much more earthiness to it. So the Undatus kind of got rid of some of the earthiness flavors in this fruit when it was hybridized, when Tr Trisha is much less earthy. Get one more. Let's see, it's not as juicy as some of the other varieties I've tested. That's just kind of the nature of the beast of the variety. So 16. So definitely very similar in sugar content. But the flavor profiles are so much different. So again, El Grullo is a denser fruit. Very kind of grainy texture. It's the only drawback about El Camponis. But it's not beady. That one is, there's no, I mean, it doesn't taste like plants or, or it's not very earthy. It's just the seeds are a little earthy. That's how I describe El Grullo. Where with this one, Trisha. The texture is just a little bit lighter. And the flavors are just much better. Raspberry. And the seeds are much less earthy. So again, if you're gonna only grow one, if you can only grow one, grow Trisha in my opinion, on the left. The, both of the plants are really spiny. So again, going head to head, Trisha, the seedling of El Grullo, grown by Edgar Valdivia, is a much better fruit. So hands down, I prefer this one 
give it about a seven and a half out of 10. This one I give about a six and a half out of 10. Good morning, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul and this little fruit is Houghton. It's under a quarter pound and 85 grams. So it's on the smaller side for sure. And you can see it comes from a really stunning flower. We did a time lapse of it. And the flower is similar to Sugar Dragon or 8S, but it's less red, it's a bit more green. It looks very similar. Now another benefit is that it's self-fertile. Now you can also see in Paul Thompson's book that the plant is labeled as being dark green with spines that are brown and black tip. And occasionally there'll be two spines. Now uh, here is the cutting that I acquired with the fruit. And I only see single spines. It's really mature and the Paul Thompson's book said it doesn't get horny, but you can see over time it, this plant did. And that's where it's the brown, different discoloration, I guess you could say, between the spines. So I would consider this slightly horny. See it right there? But sometimes, usually a certain varieties will go all the way from spine to spine. But anyways, it does look similar to Sugar Dragon because it's the parent plant of 8S and 7S. All right, so it's also named after Arthur D. Houghton, which is a medical doctor slash botanist, and he was a Los Angeles City Council member. And he had an interesting life from the 1870s until 1938. So let's get going on this plant. I should say fruit. Beautiful color. Much more round than the other one that I tasted versus El Grullo. But it definitely looks quite ripe. Skin is rather thin, so it's not the best for commercial potential. You can see the size of it is small and thin skin. So let's see how much sugar content is in this little fruit. Now the flesh color is very similar to Sugar Dragon, magenta, and Sugar Dragon is larger, so I guess there is improvement when this was hybridized by Paul Thompson. Not this one, but Sugar Dragon. This is the parent plant. It does taste quite similar to Sugar Dragon. This one's sweeter than the other fruit that I tasted. It's quite nice. I would definitely give this like an 8 out of 10. So enjoyable. Or really small. A benefit is that this variety is self fertile. So that's always a good thing. So 18 and 6 tenths. It's a very respectable score. And I think this fruit, I probably picked it a little bit early. These will get up to half a pound. But wow, what a delicious variety. Houghton. I give this an 8 out of 10 for sure. Really enjoyable fruit. Not very earthy at all. Maybe the seeds are slightly earthy but very minimal. Overall, just a sweet, delicious, moist dragon fruit. All right, give us a like and a subscribe. Have yourself a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Greetings, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul, and today I'm gonna to review Pink Panther. It's a little over a quarter pound or 125 grams. Now this beautiful hybrid was created by Edgar Valdivia, who's also created the Asunta line, Trisha, and many, many more. And you can see it has spines on it, so be really, really careful. I don't think they stay on there too hard though, but they will get you if you're not careful. So it definitely does have some spines on the flesh, or I said, should, should say the outer skin of the fruit. So this plant variety gets its name for its colored flesh. It's gonna be a nice, beautiful kind of pink inside. And let's check it out. There it is. 
And this one did sit on the plant for about 60 to 70 days. So it's been on there quite a while. It's a little overripe right there, but I still think it's gonna taste great. So a nice, beautiful color. It's very pink. Kind of reminds me of Sugar Dragon a little bit. You can see what the flower looks like. It's a beautiful flower. And again, look at the spines on the outer skin of that fruit. You can brush them off easily with, a, with like a toothbrush or you could use your hands like I did. Just be really careful. Okay, so let's go ahead and give it a whirl. Let's see how Pink Panther tastes. Now it will get twice in size. It could get up to a half pound of fruit. Wow. It's delicious. I think I like this one just as much as Sugar Dragon or maybe even more. It is similar. Definitely a nice sweetness to it at first and then it's got a nice balance of there's some acidity in there. It's just a really flavorful fruit. Even though it's slightly overripe, it's still just delicious. Wow. See the color of the flesh? It's definitely pinker, more pink than Sugar Dragon. See that? Mmm, really enjoyable. Let's go ahead and let's check the sugar content of this variety, this specific fruit, I should say. So not too many juices are in there. There we go. Eighteen and one tenth. I'm sure it will get probably into the twenties as the plant matures. This is again as the very first fruit that my pink panther has produced. It is self-fertile, which is another huge benefit of this variety. And wow, what a great fruit! What an excellent flavor. I find everything about this just really enjoyable. Okay, so there you go. This is Pink Panther, created by Edgar Valdivia. They get up to about a half pound, but they are definitely different than Sugar Dragon. I wonder if it's a Sugar Dragon crossed with an Undatus? I do not know. I don't think anybody knows what this was crossed with, but either way, it's a delicious fruit. If you can't have Sugar Dragon, go with something like Pink Panther. Mmm. All right, give us a like, subscribe. Thanks so much for your time. Have yourself a wonderful day. Good morning, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul, and this is K2, I was calling it, but I believe it's the wrong Maria Rosa. It's at 67 hundredths of a pound or 304 grams. And this one's split open, as you could see. So it was time to harvest it. Now, I, I know that the wrong Maria Rosa will bricks into the 20s. And this one, it may have just gotten too much water and split open. But this plant in just 16 months has produced multiple fruit. And this one just bricks to a 17 and 4 tenths. So really delicious flavor, by the way. But let's do a formal taste test on this larger one that's split. It's a very interesting hybrid. And I'm not 100% sure if this is the wrong Maria Rosa, to be honest with you. I, I want to compare the fruit with some people that have that plant, but I know this came out of the same farm. So it's a really unique looking hybrid, unique shape, and it's an unknown hybrid of unknown origins. So let's give this thing a taste test and see how the brick score is. It's just a really pleasant, delicious, melony vibe, I would say. Really enjoyable. No earthiness. Just a wonderful fruit. If you're wondering, this is Edgar's baby. So I was tasting this one. It's a little early, or small, I should say, but it's ripe and it's delicious. I, I would definitely say this one's from the Asunta line, by the way. Sorry to stay on task here. 
stay on topic. Let's see how the wrong Maria Rosa does her. I'm gonna continue to call it K2 until I can really be certain. Now I've had multiple fruits off of this plant and I really enjoy them. Probably my favorite of the season, I'd have to say. And it's in the 17 and 6 tenths. I think it's going to test even higher. As the plant matures. But it's definitely a delicious fruit. My favorite fruit I've eaten this season, without a doubt. I prefer this more than K. I do like red flesh, but something about these really just hybrids of red and pink fleshed or red and white flesh I should say that's what this is probably just something about them is I really enjoy them oops got a little bit of air in that reading there we go okay so in the 17s now that I was hoping for 20s, as everyone always is, but that doesn't mean it's a bad fruit. And again, this plant is young. This is its first flush. And what's more important is just how balanced this delicious fruit is. Easily my favorite this season. I like the color of the flesh, the acidity, the balance. It's a bit on the sweet side, more than the, I don't taste any tartness or anything earthy. It's just a delicious fruit. I'm gonna grow multiple plants of this variety. So I'm gonna set up a few more pots. That's how much I like this one. It's been really productive. The only bummer is it appears it needs cross pollination. It's a little bit lower as you get deeper into the flesh of the fruit. So that's why I like to take the scores in the center because it tends to be a little bit sweeter. So yeah, I'm gonna give this score an eight and a half to a nine. This is one of my favorite dragon fruit varieties that I've eaten to date in my opinion. And I would like to share this plant. And I hope many people will enjoy this fruit in the future. I give it two thumbs up, it's awesome. Hopefully it'll get larger. From the pictures I've seen them get larger over a pound so there you go give us a like and a subscribe and we'll continue to evaluate this plant and I'm gonna go compare it with a few fellow growers to make sure I mean I know where this plant came from I picked it off the mother plant but I just want to confirm that this is the same one because that farm has some unique different plants or had most of them have died over the years and so we'll continue to evaluate these wonderful wonderful Route. All right, take care. Greetings, fellow gardeners. This is Paul, and today I'm going to share my experience with this interesting dragon fruit that I got from my friends at Wallace Ranch. Now, you can see this is not photoshopped like some people implied. This is something that does occur every now and then. This is the only branch that turned into a fruit at Wallace Ranch. So, out of 20,000 pounds of dragon fruit, this is the only one. And they weren't 100% sure, but they're pretty. They thought it was delight. So I'm really excited to do a review on this fruit. It's very interesting to me. And I guess I'll try to save this branch just for fun. So look at that. A little bit of the coloring of the ripeness into the flesh of this. So I'll try to root this just to see what happens. I find that really interesting. Wow, how cool is that? So again, this does not happen all too often. I've never had it happen in four years of growing dragon fruit. So hopefully I'll get to experience it one day myself. All right, let's cut open this little fruit. I guess I'll cut it down this way just to kind of dissect it. And there we go. It does look like delight. 
So I think Julio is correct. So a little baby delight. How cool is that? I find this really interesting in case you can't hear my enthusiasm. So very cool. I wonder what it tastes like. Let's see. Not very many seeds in it. Wow. It's delightful. Might as well check out the bricks. So see what type of sugar content a branch can produce. It's definitely really ripe, ripe, really juicy. And I guess the only difference I see here is that there's not that much, not that many seeds. So 17, 16 and 9 tenths. But it tastes delicious. Mmm. Especially for how small it is. But I did, I do find that really interesting that there, there's, it's just almost all flesh. There are, there are not very many seeds. It's really, really juicy too. So there you go. Thank you, Wallace Ranch, again for allowing me to cut this open and experience this unique occurrence that does happen every now and then with dragon fruit, where the branch will turn into a fruit. Hello, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul, and here is the unknown variety I call the Unknown Road. It's just under a pound, and if you remember, we literally found this on the side of the road for free just over a year ago. And now we have this fruit and it's white fleshed. But what's interesting about this variety is that it's not self fertile. The plant requires cross pollination. I tested it out and I tried four flowers and they all aborted with its own, with its own pollen. So white fleshed self sterile variety, which is not always a good thing. And I have right here K, you can just see the differences between a red flesh variety and a white flesh variety. Now the last white flesh variety I had, it was just okay. And let's see if this one tastes better. So it's definitely a different shape than Soul Kitchen White. And this Unknown Road has a nice amount of flesh to seeds. So it's not too seedy. Let's see how it tastes. It's nice and juicy too. A little bit sweet. Mmm. This one is a hundred times better than Soul Kitchen. Wow, this is really sweet. We need to brix this. This is the best white flesh variety I've tasted to date. And who would have thought we found it free on the side of the road? Wow, this is a really sweet white. Let's see if I'm right. Let's see if the brix refractometer agrees. Again, this checks the content of sugar, the percentage of sugar in the sample. And you want to use the liquid, not solids, otherwise you'll get an inaccurate reading. All right. Score is a 17.8. I would have guessed it was 18 or 19. But this is a really tasty fruit. I'm going to keep this plant. I'm noticing that white flesh varieties are not my favorite to grow out of the 150 varieties we have. But this one I'm keeping. Very sweet, really nice texture, really juicy, balanced, zero earthy aftertaste. Really enjoyable fruit. I bet this will get into the 20s if I left it on a little longer. Well, I spit out a little seed, that was gross. Sorry, but what I was saying is that I think that this one will sweeten up even more if I left it on the plant longer. And what's nice about this is it didn't split like that Soul Kitchen White that I reviewed recently. Mmm, that is really enjoyable. 
I'm gonna always keep this unknown. I, I looked, I gave up trying to find out what it is because there aren't too many commercial varieties that are um, self-sterile, that are white flesh. Most are self-fertile. Mm. Let me see what it tastes like right after compared to these, a red versus a white. Mm. Reds are much more berry. The white just tastes more sweet, like a mel sweet melon. Let's mix it up. Oh, that's delicious. Okay. So I will be keeping this variety and I will share some of this plant with friends because I think it's definitely a, a decent variety. No earthiness, very sweet. The only bummer is, like I said, it requires cross-pollination. Mmm. All right. I really like this white variety. Good morning, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul, and today I'm going to do a review on the Wallace Ranch Maria Rosa. You can see it's close to two pounds, or 869 grams. Now, it's quite large, and it did have a little split. And so I asked them if I could do a review, and they are nice enough to allow me. If you want to buy cuttings of this, you could get it at their website right here. So the story behind this beautiful fruit is Linda from Elk Creek Dragon Fruit had a friend that had some dragon fruit and Linda grew it out and evaluated it and it was a great delicious pale pink fruit that is self-sterile. But you can see it's a delicious, beautiful, large, pale pink fruit. So this is the real Maria, Maria Rosa. So... Excited to see what it tastes like. And that is really, really sweet. Wow. That's much sweeter than the ones I've had in the past. Let's go ahead and give it a brick score. It is nice, beautiful, and round, and really, really large. What a delicious fruit. You can see what I mean by pale pink. It's just ever so slightly pink. Okay. Now, typically the plant is gonna have one single spine, but occasionally we'll have two. But almost always a single spine. And there's another Maria Rosa that I call the wrong Maria Rosa, which is a delicious fruit in its own, but that's a fuchsia colored flesh. And it's much, much different than this one. 18 and 3 tenths. Now we are having unique weather, so I bet it will get higher. I've heard this will break into the 20s, low 20s. In my opinion, this is really, really sweet, lovely texture. Kind of has some of the flavors that remind me in some of the Asuntas I've tasted, believe it or not. This is a delicious fruit. I would give this a nine out of 10. It's got a really interesting complex flavor. Definitely different than a white flesh variety. I prefer this over any white flesh variety I've had to date. Excellent fruit. You need to try Maria Rosa. Now, friends of mine recommend using this for a rootstock as well. They say it's an excellent rootstock. So there you go, Maria Rosa. Definitely a wonderful variety of dragon fruit. Even though the brick score was under 20, that's not any everything. And this is just a delicious, complex, wonderful fruit. I highly recommend it. 
All right, give us a like, subscribe. Have yourself a wonderful day. Hopefully you can try a giant Maria Rosa sometime in the future yourself. All right, take care. Oh, and I did want to say the flavors of this are completely different than like the Laverne Pink that I reviewed recently. I call Paul's Laverne Pink. Totally different spectrum of flavors. Okay, that's it. Take care. Good morning, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul, and today we're going to taste this beautiful Connie Mayer fruit. It's over a third of a pound, or 160 grams. And it was pollinated back on June 17th. I want to say thank you, Kane. We swapped some pollen for some fruit. He gave me these fruit and I gave him some fresh pollen. So it looks like this is an awesome swap. I'm excited to taste this fruit. Well, actually I did already taste it. So he gave me two. You can see that first thing I want you to remember is Connie Mayer comes from a purple flower. You can see our Bruni here and how different it looks. The shape of the flower, the color is pinkish and it's different than this white one here. And this is a Pelora fruit, which I've tasted before, store-bought. Here's an unknown Guatemalan. And this one is a Harissia, my first fruit from a cutting. So it's smaller, we've tasted them before. They're very, very, the, the seeds I remember are very delightful. But anyways, Connie Mayer is a hybrid created by German hybridizer Eckhart Meyer. And its seedling sisters are Bruni and Kathy Von Arum. Now, this fruit has been on the vine for 55 days and I put it in the fridge last night. So it's day 56. And this first fruit I tasted just a little bit and it breaks at a 19.1. Now, the larger the fruit, usually the higher the bricks. So let's cut this one open and give it a taste and show you beautiful Connie Mayer. Now I've tasted Bruni and this tastes very similar. So I don't notice much of a difference. You can see that the seeds have not really germinated yet, which is a good sign. Once you hit past day 60 or so, that can happen, especially with these hybrids. And let's see how it tastes. Mmm. Very complex flavor. This one I think is definitely sweeter in my opinion than the other one. Wow, definitely a coconutty vibe. And let's see what the brick score is. Oops, I'm getting too excited. So it is a white fleshed fruit. Oh, it needs to cover it, there we go. Okay. Here we go. So remember, you wanna take your reading from the center and you just wanna extract the juices. Now, this is such a different flavor. It's very intense. Not very floral, but very pleasant compared to the Guatemalan varieties. 19.4. See it there? Oh, uh, that's a very respectable brick score. Very sweet. And that means that almost 20% of this is sugar. But very different flavors between these two. Now, I do really like the coconut vibe that this gives. It's intense. It's almost like a, if you've ever had something with coconut flavoring, tastes like that but in a very pleasant way but I can see that some people don't like that compared to something like this which is an unknown Guatemalan variety could be American Beauty or one of the G series and this produced a fruit in a one year this little plant so let's see how different these fruits are very very different definitely less sweet and no coconut flavor, more of a watermelon kind of lychee vibe. So there you go. Definitely different flavored fruits, definitely different appearances. And that's why I love dragon fruit so much. So give us a like and a subscribe. 
And if I could taste either of these, this is the one that I prefer. Now, give me a more mature one of these Guatemala varieties, and that's probably an even better tasting fruit. So have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. There is Connie Mayer. Greetings, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul, and today we're gonna review Rosa. 86 hundredths of a pound, 391 grams. Now they call it Rosa because the scattered bracts from this angle. Now what do you think? Does it look like a rose? Now I got this plant from Spicy Exotics, and the oldest source I found online is Matt's Landscaping you can see here, which is no longer, it's closed down. And you can also see the UCNR research information. Like I said, call it, it looks like a rose from the top due to the scattered bracts. It's got a thinner rind. It's a later harvest variety, as you can see. And it has a unique lime green stigma. Good heat tolerance, and it's got commercial potential. However, it's been a slow grower for me. Now you can see here the flowers now, which are stunning and really beautiful. They smell, they're very fragrant in a good way, and they're large. And I've seen it both called a polyrhizus and a costa recensis, or costa recensis. And I think it's more of the latter. It reminds me a lot of Sabra and Lisa, but it is a slow grower for me. Now the good news is it can bricks up to 20 from what I hear, 16 through to 20. So let's give it a taste and let's see how it scores. Beautiful red flesh. And it's been on the plant for about 40 days. Uh, excuse me, 60 days. So it's been on there a long time. It's been a slow, slow to ripen. It's been rather cold and it is the middle of November. So it definitely is a late season dragon fruit variety. Let's get a nice amount of liquid there. Let's see how it scores. It's a beautiful red color. Nice and juicy. 16 and 2 tenths. So that's a standard score for a red, but again, it's reported into the 20s. Wow. This is a delicious dragon fruit. Very good red variety. Definitely red I want to keep. Beautiful texture. I don't detect any earthiness. Maybe a little in the seeds. Not so much raspberry like Linda's Orahona. This is more of a strawberry, in my opinion. Really, really good, wow. This is a delicious red fruit. I must say I'm becoming more prejudiced towards magenta flesh, but then it's fruit like this that reminds me that red flesh varieties are delicious. Ma'am, I'm going to give that 8 out of 10. Crunchy seeds, very mild, <clears throat> not tart, very smooth finish in my opinion great fruit wow rosa i recommend it now the bummer is this does require cross-pollination the plant is self-sterile does not accept its own pollen but with fruit like this it's well worth it mm. all right give us a like 
going to subscribe. Thanks for your time. Have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. Good morning, fellow Dragon Free Growers. This is Paul, and today I'm going to do a review on Soul Kitchen White. This fruit weighs one and a quarter pounds, or 573 grams. Now you can see this beautiful fruit here, and there's something that actually got me pretty good last night. When I picked it, hopefully you could see the spines there. So this variety has spines on two spots at the base, and they're very sharp. They pierced my skin and made me bleed a bit. Ah, I just got it again. And it also cracked yesterday. Now, multiple sources uh, report that this Hylocerus undatus is self-fertile. I haven't tested that yet. And people report that this is a great flavored fruit and it's the least earthy aftertaste of the whites. This is on day 43 when it cracked. So it was 43 days on the vine. I was checking every day, so it split sometime in that morning or by the time I got to it in the afternoon, it had split. So there you go, nice, pretty color of white flesh. It's quite a bit of seeds, but they're smaller. And it's reported that this fruit tastes the best if it's cross-pollinated, like I cross-pollinated this flower. So we'll see how it tastes. Let's go ahead and just give it a shot. I'm excited to try this white. This is the first white flesh dragon fruit that I've grown from my house. And it's decent. It's got kind of a lemony flavor. So it's definitely not that sweet. And it's enjoyable. A lot of people say, a lot of growers use this just for a pollen source in their collection. Mm. It's good, but I can definitely tell you it's not going to be a winner this season. A little bit on the bland side, personally, for my tastes. I'd take a sugar dragon and a heartbeat over this thing. But let's give it a brick score and see. Now, I may pull out this plant. I'll probably give it another season or two. But I may pull out this plant and replace it with something a bit more enjoyable like I'll straight up give this fruit about a 6 out of 10 maybe a yeah 6 out of 10 so I would not grow this one <laughs> I would not recommend it maybe in a year just two when the plants bigger it's gonna be sweeter but it's hard to find a really enjoyable white in my opinion all right let's read this So 13.5. Now, it's reported, you can see here on Matt's landscaping, that he said that he got it up to in the 17s, which would be a pretty sweet fruit. But 13 and 0.5, 13 and a half, is on the lower end of the bricks, in my opinion. And that's why it just tastes kind of lemony, I guess is a good description. I mean, it's got some sweetness. It's definitely not earthy. So it's got a nice finish. The seeds are not earthy in flavor. It's kind of like a slight lemony vibe. Melon and lemon. I'm liking it more and more as I eat it. But again, I'm gonna give this like a six out of 10. There's much better dragon fruit out there than Soul Kitchen White. So there you go. Give us a like and a subscribe. And hopefully I will continue on my quest for better tasting white fruit. And hopefully we can check back with something much sweeter in the future. All right, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Take care. It is a beautiful fruit. Good morning, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul with another fruit review. And today I'm gonna to review Sabra. It weighs in at one and a quarter pounds, slightly above that, 581 grams. Now this is the first fruit I got off of the plant and I've been growing it for three seasons now. 
So it's a nice sized fruit. I'm excited to taste it. And people report that this is similar to Lisa, Rosa, and Kaslau, or K. So let's cut it open and let's see what it's made of. Beautiful red fleshed fruit, as you can see. This might be picked a little early, but it's also December because you can see the skin's still pretty thick. Now this can bricks up into the 20s, so I'm interested to see how this one scores today. So let's test it out. Let's zero that. And I'm gonna guess in the 18s, but again, these can bricks higher are known to bricks higher. Plenty of juice. It's not very dry, which is a good thing. All right, let's see it. So 18 and 8 tenths. So that's a very sweet score for a red. So let's give it a shot. Let's see what it tastes like. Nice texture. Nice flesh to seed ratio. It's not really, really seedy. That's really good. This is the best red I've had this year. Even better than Kaslau, in my opinion. A really, really sweet. Wow. It's like a sweet raspberry. I am getting a little bit of earthiness from the seeds. Not like a dirt flavor, but mild. Just a hint every now and then. But this is a delicious red flesh fruit. I highly recommend Lisa, Sabra, Rosa, Kaslau. Those tend to be my favorite reds. Linda's Orajona is really good too, but not as sweet. In my humble opinion, I think a Costa Census is better generally than a Polyrhizus. Just in terms of flavor and sweetness, it's just slightly better in my humble opinion. Mmm. Really enjoyable dragon fruit. I would give this an eight and a half out of 10. And it's weird, it's only sometimes I get an earthiness to it, and it must be just if I crack open a seed with my teeth just right or something. But most bites, it's really clean. Like that one, I tasted zero earthiness. So it must be in the seeds. Let me see if I could just get a couple seeds just to try to target that earthiness. Not really, no. It's just occasional, huh. Very interesting. But it doesn't uh, distract me from the flavors of this. To me, again, eight and a half out of 10. This is a delicious, wonderful fru fruit, Sabra. You can see, be careful. It can stain things, it can stain your fingers, or probably even your granite countertops. All right, give us a like and a subscribe. Have yourself a wonderful day, and hopefully someday you'll get to try this lovely dragon fruit variety called Sabra. It's very similar to Lisa. All right. It's native to Nicaragua, by the way, if I didn't say that. So this is one of the six, or technically I believe there's more like eight that came up from Nicaragua. And this is one of them. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care. Good morning, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul. And today I'm excited to do a taste test on this variety we call K, or Kaslau fruit. Now, if you, you remember, we moved this entire plant earlier this spring and now it's at my house. And then you remember that it had an epic bloom that we showed a little over a month ago. And those blooms became this beautiful fruit. Now this thing's definitely over a pound. Let's see how heavy it is. Not in milliliters, obviously. And 
it is over one and a quarter pounds. So one and a quarter pound pounds or 571 grams, which is a great size dragon fruit. You can see the color. I've, I ate one earlier a week ago and it was a little tart, but really delicious and enjoyable. And it breaks it at about 16. So let's see what one more week on the plant can do. And let's taste this large dragon fruit. You can see here it's red fleshed, really juicy, and the seeds aren't too large. So that extra week has really improved this fruit. It looks like the skin's a little bit thinner, but still it's nice and thick. So this would be good for commercial production and tr uh, shipping because it's not going to get damaged. It's just a beautiful red fleshed variety. Again, the blade will show you kind of the color of the flesh. It almost looks darker in real life than what you're seeing on film. So with my naked eye, it looks much darker. All right, let's give it a taste. So right out of the center is usually the sweetest. And this has been on the vine or the branch for about 48 days, I want to say. Mmm. It's sweetened up a lot in the past week, but it still tastes like crushed raspberries. That's what I would describe the flavor of profile of this fruit so far. Let's give it a bricks. Let's see if it's scoring high. And this will indicate how much, what percentage of the fruit is sugar. And in my opinion, anything above 15 is good. I've had some up in the 20s and those are very sweet. Like a Polora I've had up in 25 and my friend had her sugar dragon up in the 28, 29 area, which is unbelievable. I'd like to try that myself. So you want to extract the juices out of the center because that's where it's going to be a nice fair reading. And it tends to be a little sweeter. So let's read it. 18 and 1 tenth, which is very respectable score. I bet it would probably get up into 19, maybe 20, if we left it on the plant a little bit longer. As you can see, it's still a little bit of green on the bracts. So I think I could have left it on a few more days, but 18 and 1 tenth is a great score. That's the highest recorded K fruit so far. And this is the largest fruit on the plant. This is just a delicious fruit. And I'm not saying that because I have the big plant, but it's just enjoyable. I like it a little bit more than Orahona, and I like Orahona. It's just a little bit sweeter. The texture is perfect. It's not too dense. It's not too airy. It's just the right amount of everything. It's really a good balanced fruit. A week ago it was more tart and it's just really mild. I'd call it like a kiwi, melon, raspberry flavor. Does that make sense? It's kind of a mixture. Maybe a little bit of blackberries. Zero earthiness on this. So wow, what a delicious fruit. I'm glad I have this plant. All right, give us a like and a subscribe. Thanks for your time. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. And take care. And hopefully you can try a red fleshed variety. Something similar to this Lisa Sabra or a Hona. But this is K. And it's definitely unique, definitely different, definitely delicious. All right. Take care. Good morning, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul. And look at Paul Thompson's 8S also known as Sugar Dragon because Linda Nickerson from Elk Creek Dragon Fruit renamed it. Now this is a hybrid of Houghton and Rixford. And this has been on the plant for about 45 days. 
you can see here's the wiggle test it's loose that way and that way kind of twists so that's when you know it's ripe also you want to wait at least a minimum of 40 days in my opinion you can see the coloring is nice darker red skin and the bracts are kind of drying up just a little bit and the green is fading off of them so that's when you know it's going to be a perfect dragon fruit so let me cut this let me put it in the refrigerator for a bit and let's go give it a nice proper review so here it is it's a quarter pound or 117 grams now we can describe this fruit as deep red outside with a fluorescent magenta flesh inside now these will get up to 12 ounces i've never seen them a full pound but they'll get pretty close all right so let's go ahead and give it a cut and let's see how it looks now it looks slightly overripe so we'll see how sweet it is but it looks like the fruit just is a little overripe in my opinion i don't like it too much when it's this texture i like it when it's a bit more softer and firm yeah it's definitely a little overripe but still delicious i mean i would i'm gonna really enjoy this but i prefer to pick this at about day 42 something like that when the bracts are still just a little bit more green but it's still delicious so don't get me wrong all right well let's see how the brick score is all right man i thought it was going to be perfect oh well that's life yeah it's definitely a little bit overripe i don't like this texture as much as i would have if i picked this about three four or five days ago Seeds are crunchy, sweet. It's not an earthy taste, it's balanced. And you get a little bit better liquid in there. It's kind of dried out a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely overripe. And I'm not complaining, I mean, it's still good. Okay, 19 and 7 tenths. Now these will get sweeter than that. My plant's younger. It's only three seasons old. So give it some time and it will produce an even sweeter fruit. But Sugar Dragon is definitely one of my favorite fruit. It's small, but the pollen and the fact that the universal pollinator and the fact that it's an early bloomer are key factors for me. And that's why I like this variety. Even though it's overripe, it's still just delicious. Really balanced. There is this like minor kind of soapy flavor is how I describe it. That's not a bad thing. Don't, don't think that that's a negative thing, but there's just this taste in it that is just this I don't know I call it slightly soapy and you just get a hint of it that's the only negative drawback I could think about this fruit I still give this an eight eight and a half out of ten my official score is eight and a half because it's just all the benefits it's small you'll get plenty of flushes it's just an enjoyable fruit so there you go, the Sugar Dragon. One of Paul Thompson's hybrids, 8S, and it's been renamed by Linda Nickerson out of Elk Creek Dragon Fruit. Beautiful variety. All right, give us a like and subscribe. Thanks for your time. Have yourself a wonderful day. Good morning, fellow gardeners. This is Paul Thompson's number seven. Now this dragon fruit is similar to Sugar Dragon and it's on a cutting as you can see. Now this plant in Paul Thompson's book says that it's a little bit different than Sugar Dragon 
because it will produce two, one or two thorns. And you can see he calls them black spines, one eighth of an inch long, or two spines that are one sixteenth of an inch long, and the plant will get horny in time. So it's similar to sugar dragon, but it will get more horny as the plant gets older. So I have two cuttings, and this one insisted on producing a fruit. And you can also see in Paul Thompson's book, he had a picture of the fruit, and I think mine's a little less plump, probably because it was again grown on a cutting. So I'm inter interested to see what this is like compared to Sugar Dragon. You can see they look a little bit different when next to each other. And I'm excited to taste this little guy. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge and let's have a taste in a little bit. Now remember, Danny says that you always want to cut it in a V. You remove a fruit if possible. And the reason why is because the plant will heal and water won't sit in here and rot, cause rot, especially in the, our wet winters in Southern California. So when you do a V cut like that, the water, it will callus over and the water will not stay there. So that's what you want to do. All right, let me put this in the fridge and we'll give it a taste and a weigh in just a little bit. Okay, so here we go. Now this is a small fruit, but it should still pack some flavor. It does look very similar to Sugar Dragon. Beautiful colored flesh. Taste is very similar to Sugar Dragon, in my opinion. So I'm wasting your money. I'm, <clears throat> this may not even be self fertile, so we'll have to see. I don't think this is quite as sweet as that Arizona purple. Let's see. Let me get more juice out. Whoops. And again, you want to get it right out of the middle. And let's see. 18. Some respectable bricks, look at that. Not bad off of another cutting, huh? These plants are amazing. All right, let's get a full taste of this fruit. Very, very similar to Sugar Dragon, in my opinion. We'll see what happens when I, we have a nice big fruit. It might be larger. But the very similar DNA. Paul Thompson's number seven. The flesh might be a little bit lighter in color, but that's about the only observable, observable difference I can see. wonderful all right there you go give us a like and a subscribe thanks for your time have yourself a wonderful day take care